Hello, this is Alan from Toolshop. In this video, I want to show you a custom module to emit arrow from some agents. Uh, so at the end, we will have a thing like that with a main agent group composed by some uh, archers, and then another agent group with arrows that are emitted based on some metadata on the on, on the archers. And then there is also an IFT a user does a collision object. So first thing before I show you the code of the custom uh, module, uh, let's see how you need to set up your agents and animation. So this is my archer. Actually, from the scene, I exported two agent type, one for the archer and another one for the arrow. But uh, you can see there are two skeletons here. One is this one, this one from the archer, and then there is the other one that's for the arrow. Uh, you don't need to do anything particular, just uh, on the archer, you should have uh, an extra joint that is used to basically constrain the arrow before start to simulate the physics. Uh, I'll show you quickly in the animation, but here in this example is at zero. So export your archer and then export also a new agent type for your arrow. Let's see the animation clip. Okay, so let me hide the arrow. Okay, this is the animation. So the joint here is the extra joint of the skeleton. So for this reason, you don't see the simulation. I will use will use this animation inside atoms to constrain the arrow. Then at some point, just start the simulation. Uh, and emit the new agent type. Okay. Uh, so we need to set up a custom attribute on the XR joint for the arrow. And I created two, two custom attributes. One, this is the emit arrow, and then this constrained arrow. So basically, when this emit arrow is a one, then the custom model will uh, emit a new agent uh, from, uh, from the second agent group. Uh, while the constrained arrow here attribute one is at one, then we will constrain the new created arrow to this joint. So, uh, for example, here now I want to meet basically the, uh, the arrow from here. So we emit the arrow when the archer take the arrow from his back, and then also turn on the constraint. The next frame we stop to emit, so the module doesn't emit a second arrow from that position, but the constraint is still active. So we still came from here, one the archer recoil, and then boom, from here, then we stop the to constraint, and then the module can simulate the arrow. So now uh, export just export normally the animation clip from animation then export your animation clip and then let's go to the setup scene Oops, sorry okay now here we have a first agent group with a grid lag Clip reader that is reading our clip. Uh, let me hide this one. So it's not a clip. As you can see, don't there aren't an arrow here because we need to emit the, the new agent and constrain that. So let's turn on the emit. The arrow emitter is our custom model that I show in a bit. Uh, 
So what you need to set up basically, what or what data we need for this model. So the first one is the parent origin group because we need to uh, check the metadata on the extra joint, see when when I meet the error, and then we need to take the set the constraint constraint metadata name that it, it's the my attribute which uh, set up in on the extra joint. Uh, as well here the trigger name that is used to emit so in this this one was, was my my uh, my attribute name that is exported by atoms uh, automatically uh, and and then here if you have a velocity attribute on the joint you can use them uh, here it's a multiplier on the velocity uh, this one is my extra joint ID so the model will emit the uh, will emit the the error from these joints, and this one is the direction used to simulate. So the error is oriented in the z axis, so we set to two, and then the agent type that is my new agent type I created for just the error. Uh, here, this one basically. It's just if you want a meet from the and uh, from a specific joint, so using the joint E, if you turn up this one, it will meet from the from the center of the agent. In this case, we have the extra joint, so just turn on. And then here is uh, an eye feed to use it to as a collision object where the arrow gets stuck basically. And then display you. As you can see here, it's a proper, it's a proper every arrow is a proper agent. Uh, also, important thing is that atoms need to compute the archer before the the arrow agent group. So remember to select the archer and then select the, the agent group for the arrow, and then press the sync button. This way, atoms will connect uh, the agent group node. Two to the one. In this way, atoms compute first the node one and then the node two. In this way, uh, when we are computing the node two, uh, we have uh, already the the data, the data from the node one already. Okay, so let's let's check the source code of this module. <coughs> Uh, so as you can see, it's just a normal behavior module, with, where I uh, override some uh, some methods for the agent created in the frame and frame. And this one is an uh, internal data that we use to store some data. So let's go in the constructor. Here we create all the attributes that we need. As I told you, the agent group defined the parent agent group. The agent type is the agent type of the agent we want to meet. And the trigger metadata name is the metadata name used to emit the as trigger to emit the new agents. Uh, this one is the uh, tells the model to use a specific joint to check the metadata name or use the main uh, agent um, agent metadata map. This one is for the constraints, well, the join ID, uh, up, up axis, and directional, and this one is a velocity multiplier, and gravity, and the end I field. Then let's go <coughs> to the init frame. So, in the init frame, we need to uh, iterate over all the parent agents and check the trigger metadata to see if we need to emit some new agents. Uh, so the code here it just basically gets the parent uh, agent groups and the list of the parent agents. Uh, then we iterate over the parent parent agents. And here, basically, we check the the joint metadata on the joint D. We you can set in the module. Uh, to see if the, this metadata exists, and if it exists and is uh, at, uh, at one, then we can emit an agent. So use this pose uh, a flag, and then also I get the direction, 
I get the matrix of the joints and I get the direction from the direction I get the, the velocity of my arrow uh, okay and here here we get the, the agent type that can be overridden so uh, here just check the override uh, map if there is some override data if not we we'll continue and we get the agent type of the new agents we won't create uh, we get the scale and then we fill the init data structure that is used by the agent group to emit to emit new agents so we just fill this with the scale position uh, of direction direction agent type and we store in a, in a vector and then we also store inside the the module some data that we need we need uh, later during the simulation uh, so here we set all this data and then to create the new agents just call the initialize new agents with the new vector of the init data and uh, at this point after this point all your agents are created uh, then at this point we need to go to the agents created uh, here we just set up the uh, the velocity and uh, we sub we set up the first uh, the the word matrix uh, at the first frame as we here from the poser we set the the word matrix and then here we create also this metadata simulation that we use this one as flag to to know when uh, constraint the error to the extra joints or simulate the error or if the arrow uh, uh, is stuck on the on the on the collision mesh. After the agent created, we need to wait that the the parent agent group is uh, updated, so it has the all the poses of every agent is updated for the current frame, and then after that we can uh, update our arrow agent, and we can do that in the end frame uh, member. So uh, at this point we can get the extra joint matrix for the constraints and, and compute our arrow, our trajectory. Here we get all the attributes from the module that we exposed. We get the eye field, if we set up an eye field, then we tear it over our, our um, arrow agents. Um, here just check some data uh, and then here we get the uh, the parent agents because we need to get the the word matrix of the extra joints uh, so we set up the poser here to get the, the word matrix uh, and then here we are getting the simulation metadata so basically uh, if the simulation is equal to two so uh, the, the error is has uh, already uh, collided with the uh, with an with the eye field, so for now just leave that, and because the default value is zero, uh, so zero it means that we need to constrain the uh, zero. Sorry, zero means that we didn't start to simulate yet the arrow, so we need to check the constraint metadata from the parent agents. And if the constraint is at one, then we need uh, to constrain our arrow to the to the extra joint of the parent. So here we get the the extra joint word matrix from the parent, uh, and we set set the word matrix of the arrow equal to the extra joint matrix here. We we set up uh, then we set the birth frame. Uh, of this uh, agent because it's used later inside the, the, the simulation and then the, we set the, the initial velocity basically uh, here basically if there is no constraints though now we can start to simulate the, the arrow so we just get the 
world matrix of the error, get the direction from the world matrix using the direction axis, and then take the velocity, and then just here, just compute the, the new velocity. Uh, this one is just a, a really simple um, um, bullet trajectory simulation. So you just get the gravity. Uh, here you multiply by 100 because we specify the, the gravity as a meter to second square. But my scene is in uh, one unit is a centimeter, so we just convert here to centimeter to second square. And here we multiply the FPS and then the, we divide the F FPS because the velocity is expressed in uh, units per frame, uh, or in this case, centimeter per frame. So we need to convert to centimeter to second. So we need to convert the velocity to centimeter per second, and then we can use the gravity, then bring everything back to uh, centimeter to frame, then set the velocity and move the, the translation of the world matrix, and, and then uh, basically orient the error along the new velocity here, and then we are setting the simulation simulation uh, metadata to one to tell the module that we are we are simulating now and here we can check then the collision with the eye field uh, so we just check the collision and then if there is a collision we store basically the the position and the direction of the agent in a, in, a, in, a, in a local space respect at the, at the in, um, intersecting phase of the eye field uh, so in this way later we can rebuild this, uh, this position direction so even if your eye field is animated the arrow will, will maintain the, the right position on top of the mesh and at this point here if there is some uh, intersection we set the simulation metadata to 2 so after that then basically the module will enter for this agent here. So at this point here, it will basically rebuild that position on, on top of the, the mesh. And then it just skip all the simulation and continue. So this is the module. You can uh, easily compile and uh, add to the, to the atoms as a, an atoms plugin. And then you can use in the in the scene. Uh, how I use it in the in this scene because uh, you can uh, automatically add the, the module here and you can add it to new agents.